So this is a picture of a, a concussion or brain injury. Typically, there is acceleration, deceleration movements of the brain, and uh, uh, you can see that uh, the brain is really like a jello. If we go back to that uh, cartoon, you can see that there is often injury to the anterior and posterior areas of the brain due to the acceleration and deceleration movement. And uh, in this case, patient fell on the side of her head, so she, sus she sustained a hemorrhage inside the temporal lobe here. Now, in addition to um, that, she uh, suffered from uh, obviously years of cravings, uh, depression, uh, eating disorder. And uh, so we, what we planned to do was try to treat all of the above. And so we stimulated the left dorsolateral prefrontal cortex to help with uh, the sort of executive function of suppressing any kind of excessive craving and excessive addiction. We also um, stimulated the uh, right dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, which is often involved in anxiety and emotional regulation as well. But what's more is very important to also stimulate the anterior cingulate, which is a region here deep in the brain. And uh, this area is heavily involved in emotional regulation and part of the limbic system. <clears throat> so depending on the parameters that you choose, uh, we can in fact treat uh, several conditions in the same patient, including major depression, generalized anxiety, and cravings, addiction, and those types of behavior. On fMRI studies, we often find abnormalities in the cingulate gyrus uh, in patients who are suffering from uh, these types of addictive behavior. And, and in this case, uh, we were able to treat uh, several conditions using this technique. Of course, she also underwent neurofeedback, and that really helped. We also did brain mapping to evaluate the f before and after each treatment in order to make sure we're making progress. So this was a very good success story where uh, patients who had suffered traumatic brain injury uh, and who had suffered years of depression, anxiety, uh, diff difficulty with mood regulation, addiction, and uh, chronic pain can be treated with uh, this technique, transcranial magnetic stimulation. So in patients who've suffered from traumatic brain injury or hemorrhage, uh, you, you have to be very careful in terms of transcranial magnetic stimulation. It is in fact contraindicated uh, in a general sense, but uh, uh, in this case, uh, we used um, carefully designed protocols aimed at uh, areas remote from the traumatic brain injury and hemorrhage and in fact patient had already been placed on anticonvulsants. Uh, in this case patient was uh, uh, really desperate for any kind of treatment to rid her of the years of uh, addiction, uh, chronic pain, anxiety and depression. And she also had a suspected history of bipolar depression so we have to really be careful and monitor these patients for events such as mania or hyper, hypomania because uh, TMS can in fact provoke that. So bilateral stimulation using inhibitory protocols, using uh, targets uh, away from the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, uh, symmetric stimulation can often be helpful in this context as it was clearly here. So we stimulated the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex on both sides. We stimulated the anterior cingulate here, um, we also monitored closely for any kind of uh, emergence of uh, uh, epileptic activity um, with repeated quantitative EEGs. Um, and so, again, with brain injury, you have what's called the coup, counter coup movement of uh, the head, meaning that even though the impact may be here, the injury sustained uh, is localized here in the opposite end. Um, so that's a cartoon of epilepsy, or I'm sorry, concussion. And um, so if we look at um, concussions on a, a deeper level, you can see disruptions in the myelin and lung 
axon injury or long track signs as we call it where you have disruptions in not only myelin but basically the highway that carries signal from one end of uh, the uh, axon to the other. Um, there's also disruptions in blood flow and uh, capillary damage and uh, hemosiderin deposit. In Parkinson's disease, uh, it's the general concept is that there is a reduction in dopamine in the areas called the uh, substantia nigra, which is actually an area in the brainstem. And uh, you'll see a reduction in number of dopaminergic cells, which leads to the symptoms of Parkinson's. Now, in terms of uh, how we treat Parkinson's, we often um, stimulate the brain um, either by implanting electrodes deep into the brain uh, in areas called the uh, subthalamic nucleus, for example, which is deep inside here, or we can actually um, stimulate the motor cortex, which is right in here, with uh, uh, 10 hertz or higher frequency, and oftentimes that relieves cogwheel rigidity and helps mobility in Parkinson's patients. Uh, there's uh, research done showing stimulation of the supplementary motor association cortex can also be very helpful in treatment of Parkinson's. So uh, with transcranial magnetic stimulation, you have a figure of eight coil which uh, stimulates this area or uh, this area or both. Uh, alternatively, we have patients, again, suffering from both depression and movement disorders, so we stimulate the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex in addition to the motor cortex, which is what we often do here.